In this video, I'm going to walk through how to configure CI CD deployment of an Azure web app using an Azure DevOps pipeline. Our goal is to have a Python app automatically built and deployed to Azure App Service every time a new PR is merged into the main branch. First, let's review the deployed environment and talk about the changes we need to make to add continuous deployment that's triggered by the main branch merges. We've already created a Python web app in Azure, but the Python app code hasn't been pushed to the app service yet. We also have a DevOps project already created, and we have a Git repo within the DevOps project called AIREF Web App Streamlit. As the repo name suggests, the repo contains a Streamlit app that will be deployed into the web app. Both the DevOps org and the Azure subscription are in the same entry directory. To complete the deployment, we need to make the following configuration changes and Azure resource additions. First, we'll create a service principle that DevOps can use to deploy the website to Azure App Service. Next, we'll create a client secret, which is like a password that allows other services, such as DevOps, to use the service principle to perform privileged operations. Then we'll authorize the service principle to deploy code to the website by adding an IAM role assignment website contributor. Then within DevOps, we'll create a service connection to hold the service principle information and the client secret. Next, we'll create a DevOps pipeline to deploy the website from the Git repo to the web application, and we'll configure the pipeline to use the service connection created in the previous step. And finally, we'll run the pipeline to test it to see if it's able to build the Python app and then deploy it to the Azure web app. And of course, at the very end, we'll test the app and make sure it works. First, we'll head over to Entra so that we can create the app registration. We just need to give it a name. Um, this should be a meaningful name so that we can tell it apart from other app registrations. The default settings are fine. Next, we'll create a client secret. We'll give the secret a meaningful name so that we can refer to it later. We'll just go with the default expiration of six months. Now that the secret is created, we'll save off the value, which becomes the password for the service principle. I'll also save off the secret ID in case I need it later. And then I will later need to know the, the client ID and the tenant ID. And you'll see later on where we actually fill these in when we create the service connection. And the last piece of information we need is the subscription ID where all this was created. So I'll go ahead and grab that. And the last thing we need to do in Azure is to go into the web app and we're going to authorize that service principle to deploy code to the app service. So we'll just add an IAM role and the IAM role we want is website contributor. So we'll click next, then we will add the, the member we'll, we'll add is the service principle that we just created. So that's app reg AI ref. Select that and go ahead and do the assignment. Okay, that's done. We're finished with Azure for now, so we'll head over to DevOps. The first thing I'll show you is the repo that we're going to deploy. So within the repo, I have the Streamlit app, it's only 36 lines. Very simple, just a very very simple app to, to see that it works. And I have a pipeline. And this pipeline is going to have two stages. One is to build the Python app, which is pulling its dependencies and packaging it. And the second is a deploy stage, which takes that zip deploy and pushes it into the app service. And the pipeline will do all this for us. And everything in here is just defining how it should do that and, and some various values that we'll come back to. So before we create the pipeline, we do need to create that service connection. So we'll choose Azure Resource Manager. We'll use the uh, the manual because we have the secrets ourselves. So we'll uh, we'll tell it we're we're going to configure it ourselves. We're going to use the secret that we created, and we so we need to paste in a lot of those values that we created earlier. So we've got subscription ID, we've got um, uh, subscription name is just reference, application ID, directory, client secret, 
And after we get the key information in, we can click the verify button and make sure that it actually works. And if it does, we'll give this a logical name to refer to it within DevOps. And then once that's all done, we can save this and we'll have the connection, which is um, all of our connection information that we'll, we'll go back to Azure. We'll use that in making the pipeline. So we need to save the ID of the service connection that we made because the pipeline is going to need that. We'll actually put that into the YAML file before we're finished. So let's grab that. And then now we have everything we need to create the pipeline. So we tell it that our pipeline is from the repo that's in DevOps, choose the repo. We do need to change the service connection ID to the connection we just created. Great, and then I'm gonna save that. And save really means committing this to the repo. So we're going to um, uh, paste that in, make sure it's right. Um, just kind of one last review of the YAML file, and then we'll go up and save this, which is a commit to the head of the repo. So there'll be a new commit in the repo if we look at it later. We'll give it a message to why we did this commit. And I'm going directly to main, but in your environment, you might want to do a PR uh, when you do this. Okay, the pipeline is, is really done. The pipeline was the YAML file, so that was already pre-written. So now we'll just go ahead and run it. And so this screen will show us as it's running. I sped this way up, so I won't make you watch the whole thing, but we can see the two stages that were defined in the YAML file, the build stage, this should take, I don't know, a minute, minute and a half, something like that. And then when the when the build stage is finished, we're going to get a prompt that we need to authorize the service um, connection to use the environment. So we'll just get this the first time we run the um, the pipeline. On subsequent runs, it'll have the permission already. So we're going to permit that, let that run again. So once that gets requeued, it'll run. This takes a bit longer than the build stage. But I'm going to sped this up so that you don't have to watch the whole thing. And it uh, should be roughly, I don't know, 8 minutes, 10 minutes, something like that. So we're almost there. Okay, so that's finished. So both stages are done. And at this point, the web app should be completed and waiting in Azure for us. So let's head over and take a look at it. So here's our web app. We're gonna take a look at the deployment center and we can actually see that it is configured for Azure Pipelines. So that all looks great. And if we look at the log, we can see that it did deploy successfully just, uh, just about now. And of course the acid test, let's just look at the app and see if it's there. So we'll paste that into a web browser, run it and looks like streamlit. Just make sure it finishes. That looks right. So that's what we meant to deploy. That's what we got. So we're all done. So we just had to set up our service principle, authorize it to deploy the app, and then go into uh, Azure DevOps and enter in all that security information uh, into a service uh, profile, and then create a pipeline, configure it to our repo, run it, give it a little more authorization, and then we get our app at the end. So hope that was helpful. Hope you learned something and I'll see you next time.